Hey guys, welcome back. This video we will be discussing data types. Almost forgot there. <laughs> Anyways, what a data type is, is when you create a column, every single value in that column has to be of a certain data type. So you need to tell that column when you create the database what data type it is to be. Also, when you're designing, you usually put the data types there as well, so that way you have an idea of how your database is going to work. So there's three main categories of data types and the naming conventions or the names of these data types from one database management system to another database management system might vary a little bit but in general they're organized into three main kinds that's date, numeric, and string. So basically we're going to be going over these in a little bit of depth, we're not going to go super in depth because right now you just need to understand what these are and just understand that your database application might be slightly different from others. Let's start from the bottom up just to make things fun. String. A string is any characters or like letters. So basically, you put these within quotes. So, hey, this is an example of a string. Even a number within quotes can be used as a string. In this case, this would be used as a string. Basically, the, uh, the 3 doesn't have any mathematical value unless it's converted to numeric. Within string, you often have some subcategories. You will have something that's either char or varchar, which those just mean character or variable character. What that means is it's just like um, a list of characters. The character or char usually is stuff that's set in length, so like a phone number or a zip code, something that doesn't change size-wise. So basically with a char, you'll, you have it something like char 8, and every single value within that char column is going to be stored as 8 individual characters. Now even if you don't put 8 characters, let's say you put 6, then there's going to be 2 blank characters in there, so they're all stored as 8. Varchar, on the other hand, is variable, basically meaning that the size can change. You can have anywhere from 0 up to 8. There's also often the subcategory or sub data type of text, which is often used for larger things such as comments, messages, and so forth. That's basic summary of the string data types. As for numeric data types, these are numbers. That's different than this. This is a string that has a number in it. That's used differently than the numeric data type. The numeric data type doesn't have quotes, it's just the numbers that you're using. Just like string, there's often some subcategories of decimal and then floating point or double. Decimal works in base 10. Now, I know we haven't really gotten much into bases, and I'm just going to put date back up here since we haven't got there yet. But I think it's really important to know. And in fact, I've made a lot of videos over binary, hexadecimal, and stuff, basically different numbering systems that use different bases. Well, decimal uses base 10. It's the number system we're used to counting in. You know, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and then it goes back to 10. 11, 12, 13, 14. It's base 10. That's what deci means in decimal. Well, there's also binary. So we have decimal, and then we have uh, binary. Decimal's base 10. Binary is in base 2. So binary, we only have the options of 0 and 1. Now, you don't really need to understand how to like calculate in binary, but if you want to know that, I do have videos for that. But just know when we're working with decimal, it is working with a base 10 system. When we're working with floating points, we're working with binary, which is stored differently. It's stored in binary, and then you can have it presented as decimal for math or whatever. So what's really the difference? Do you use decimal or do you use floating points? It just kind of really depends. Decimal generally is more accurate on mathematics to a point 
there are problems that can come up with decimal, but you'll just have to research those. But basically, uh, this one has some errors. Binary, it has problems with certain mathematical equations or numbers. For example, when we want to store one-fourth, it's stored like this. We have 0 0.01. And the way this kind of works is we have anything after the point, that divides the number basically in half, so we would have half, but we don't have half, so we have half of a half, one-fourth. Kind of makes sense? So the, the place values would be, this one right here would be, uh, we'd have half, this place value would be one-fourth, and then anything after that would be one-eighth, and anything after that would be one-sixteenth. So right now, the way we have it, we would take one-half, multiply it by zero to get zero, because we don't have anything there. We take one-fourth, multiply it by one, since we have it there, we'd get one-fourth. Zero, zero. We add those up, we get one-fourth. Basic uh, adding and multiplying to understand how it works. But when we have a number such as 0.1 in decimal, that is basically impossible to store in binary simply because we're working in a base 2 system and we can't get to 0.1 very easily. Because 1 eighth, that doesn't quite cut it. You have to basically have a combination of a bunch of different fractions to get as close as possible to 0.1, but you can never really get there perfectly. So that's a problem with the floating points. So if you needed to store something like that, you would, if it needs to have that accuracy, you would have to have it stored as a decimal, which stores it differently. Oh, that was a lot. Sorry if I completely overwhelmed you with that number stuff. And if I did, don't even worry about it. That was a little too fast. If you need it slower, please check out my introduction to binary video. It's a super long video where I basically explain it step by step so you understand. And then I have a couple other videos adding and subtracting and also fractions in uh, binary. You will also have an integer type which will only store numbers that don't have any decimals after them. So only whole numbers like 5, 12, 28, negative 52, so forth. With numbers, we also have to worry about whether they are unsigned or signed. If they are unsigned numbers, that means that they can't be negative. If they are signed, that means they can be positive or negative. You're probably wondering, why would you ever do that? Well, if you're working with something that doesn't go negative, well, then you wouldn't need it to have that negative. When you have a signed number, and it can be positive or negative, the range of potential values stays the same, but since you include negatives, the maximum value is different. It's not as high. Think about if you have a range from 0 to 1,000, but then you include negatives. Now you have from negative 500 to 500. That is going to be told with the data type. So you might say something like double unsigned. That would work as a number. That's enough for numbers. I don't want to talk about this anymore. Let's talk about dates. Dates. Well, there's couple different things you need to know about dates. There's date, then there's time, there's date time, and then there's time stamp. So let's talk about date time first because it makes sense the best. It basically just stores a date such as, you know, 02 for February, then you might have a colon, you might have 22 for the date, the 22nd, and then a colon maybe uh, 1998 for 1998, <laughs> the year. Then you have the time, which could be whatever, it could be 12, 30, 22, which would be the seconds, and you might even be able to have some milliseconds or microseconds. That's how you would store a date time. The way it actually looks might vary from database management system to database management system. Some might have colons between the numbers, some, some might have uh, hyphens or commas or whatever. It doesn't really matter. I don't want you to think about that right now, I just want you to think about the date being a date and the time being a time. Date time being the combination of a date and a time. So that's pretty much that for dates. The only other thing is the timestamp. 
The timestamp is an exact moment in time that's recorded to establish when something was created or done. It can be in milliseconds or it can be in the month and the day and then the second uh, hour and then the seconds and then the milliseconds. Or it can just be a number of seconds, so forth. It varies. But anyways, that's going to give you a number when something was done. It's usually for something like when an account was created or when a transaction was done or when something happened. When you update a column, that timestamp will often update and that's going to keep it to like when that row was entered into the database. So if you enter a new row and one of the columns is a timestamp, it's going to give you a value as soon as you submit that and it's put into the database timestamps created and it says okay this row was entered at this time. That's the main thing with um, timestamps. So basically you got three types of data types. We got string, um, it's numeric, and then date. All of those classifications have different data types for each one but in general as long as you know like the gist of what is what you'll be fine. You don't have to worry too much because when you get in actually programming a database you will have more specifics on what data types to use. So you guys, thank you for watching. Sorry for rambling in this video. It was a long one. Whew. Peace out.